Syria. Let's bring in retired Lieutenant Colonel James Carafano, Vice President for National Security and Force Foreign Policy at the Heritage Foundation. Great to have you. Good to be with you. So the Iranian regime's talking tough, threatening to enrich beyond those 2015 levels. What is your explanation for Tehran's behavior? Well, it, it's a bit of a head scratcher from, a, from an external perspective. You know, on the one hand, by doing this, they, they show how the deal wasn't really a restraint on the Iranian nuclear program to begin with. That's not good for Iran. They're putting the Europeans in a tough spot. They either have to put sanctions on them, which would put more pressure on Iran, or they have to ignore the, the, the violations, which makes the Europeans look feckless. You know, Iran's in a tough part of the world, and if you're, if you're not looking tough, you're on the menu. So, and again, we're just speculating right. here, but you wonder if some of this is really for kind of internal consumption, where if we're not pushing back on the external community, we will look weak, and that's something the Iranian regime can't afford to do. The Iranians are pushing Europe to cut a new deal in a hurry, but does that risk them actually bringing the U.S. and Europe closer together? Look, I think, I think the breaking news pretty soon is going to be the U.K. will flip. I think a new conservative government is essentially just going to break with the Europeans and side with the U.S. And so the, the likelihood of the Europeans coming together and doing a deal for the Iranians is zero. What's much, much more likely is the space between the Europeans and the Iranians is going to grow. Are the Iranians watching the American political calendar, a presidential election next year, to see if perhaps they won't have to deal with President Trump in January 2021? You know, again, we're speculating because we're, we're not in Tehran. I'm sure. not in until I don't have classified info. But I always assume that the Iranian position was just trying to wait Trump out and hope that they would get a better deal from the next American president, which isn't kind of likely because they've heard several candidates say, oh, we'll just go back to the Iran deal. But on the other hand, they can't just do nothing for the next 18 months. So they, I think they've got to play this game where on the one hand, look tough, push people, but on the other hand, just really hope that somebody else gets elected in two years. What kind of lashing out are you expecting from the regime sponsoring violence, terrorism, or more aggressive military action? Well, you know, the one thing we know is that this is not a unified regime. It's not like the United States where Donald Trump says, we're going to do this, and everybody says, yes, boss. Um, there are different factions within there. Sometimes those factions are fighting each other, just like we fight on our side about what, whether we should be tough or soft. Um, sometimes they do things on their own initiative. I would expect some things, because the Iranians just have to find ways to continue to look tough. Mm -hmm. But it's very, very clear, and, we, and they've been very consistent in this. They are looking for ways to keep things below the threshold, because they don't want to get in an escalatory situation either. President Trump thought long and hard about a military response after the U.S. Navy drone was shot down. Would you advise him to not go too far if the Iranians do something provocative again? Well, I think the key thing for the U.S. is proportionality. Matter of fact, the president even used that word, and I've never heard him use that word before, um, which is if the United States want to continue to gather an international coalition to pressure the Iranians, we can't, in a sense, overstretch. Like, if we use the, an Iranian doing something as an excuse to really escalate the violence, I think that would put the U.S., that would jeopardize the U.S. position, undermine our policy of really looking for an international consensus, and really, in the end, trying to press the Iranians back into a diplomatic track that would actually provide a sustainable solution over time. So I think the U.S. will, if the Iranians try to hurt living human beings, um, the United States will respond to protect them or to take out the threats to them. But I think that would be the limit of U.S. action. I'm curious what you see as the difference between the Iran situation and North Korea. We saw the president making history going into the DMZ last weekend, speaking with the North Korean dictator. Uh, is it the fact that North Korea is willing to talk and Rouhani of Iran is not willing to talk at this point? Well, I, I actually think the strategies are identical, and they have to be identical because they're watching each other. If, if the United States does one thing with the North Koreans, then the Iranians look at that. So in both cases, he is protecting U.S. interests. In the case of Iran, he's defending the freedom of access in the waterway. In the case of North Korea, he's, he's deterring a, um, a war or, or a nuclear threat against the United States. But then he offers a diplomatic off-ramp. As long as the North Koreans are willing to engage on that, I think the president holds pressure where it is. But on the other hand, he's, he's going to continue to put that pressure until the Iranians adopt the, the similar option. But I, I think what's key here is the president cannot offer a sweetheart deal to North Korea. He mm -hmm. can't just say, OK, you can keep your nuclear weapons. Don't worry about that. Because the Iranians will read that. And they say, if you give that deal to the North Koreans, then we know we can play you as well. James Carafano from the Heritage Foundation. Fascinating discussion. Thanks so much for your time.